Hi, I'm Dan. Welcome to Upper Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to show you how I fixed the artwork on this guitar from some peeling clear coat. I originally painted these skulls on this guitar and I had some trouble with the clear coat peeling. I actually did a video on how to fix clear coat. I fixed the clear coat, but the problem is where I fixed the clear coat, it was fine. And that held up really nice. The problem is the rest of the clear coat kept lifting. So I had to decide what I was going to do with this particular piece. I decided I was going to take my orbital sander, as you'll see in the video, and sand it all down. And I was just going to redo the artwork. But I ran into some surprises along the way. What I want to share with you in this video is not only how I achieved this result, but the mistakes that I made trying to get to this result and how I overcame them. The other interesting thing that I added to this piece was some black candy which I'd never used before. So again, it was a learning process. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. A couple of comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, helps this channel grow. A thumbs up would be great. Don't forget to check out all those Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, so what I'm doing here is I put 80 grit sandpaper here on my sander. And as you can see, I'm taking a clear coat off. Now the clear coat is one flash coat and three wet coats. So basically three and a half coats of clear. So it's fairly thick. And now this is just regular clear or 1K clear. You might want to call it from your local hardware store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this off. And my original intention was to not only take the clear coat off, but also to sand down the artwork as well and just start over. But as you see here in a minute, I actually wound up with a pleasant surprise. As you can see too, I'm really using the edge of that sander. It just helps take it down a little bit quicker. I was trying not to take all of the black off down to the actual original woodwork, but as you can see, I got a little low in some spots. So I'm gonna be putting a sealer over all of this anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. Now I switch to a 120 grit. I'm going to wipe some dust off first. You should periodically wipe off the dust so you're not sanding the dust back in. You see I'm changing sandpapers again, and as you can see here, I'm graduating to 220. Now keep in mind, I'm trying to fix a mistake here. And what I actually did next was I created another mistake because as you just saw on the screen there, I didn't finish off with at least 400. So that's gonna play a role that you'll see here in a minute. So I cleaned it off with mineral spirits because that's my choice or it's my go-to cleaner, especially with Createx paints, that is the go-to cleaner. But I just like it for cleaning in general. So I was going to tape it off with, as you see, just the paper and I decided to get out my quarter inch fine line tape. And I just figured it was going to be easier to tape around the binding or the white binding that you see going around a guitar. It's going to be a lot easier to apply my paper and my tape. So now that I got the fine line tape on, you can see I'm just taking little pieces of paper here with the blue painter's tape, and this way I can tape right onto the fine line tape. That fine line tape is really great for going around curves. So 
So now I'm just going to take my time to tape up the whole guitar. And you really do want to tape up everything. You know, want to cover everything because the overspray will get everywhere that you don't have papered up or taped up. I actually made this mistake the first time through. I did not tape up the neck good enough and actually wound up getting some clear coat, extra clear coat on the neck. more cleaning with the mineral spirits as you can see I like to use air and using the air you can just really see how it dries it off otherwise you're really gonna have to you know wait a little while till that really dries because you do want to make sure the surface is dry now I'm using the Autoborn sealer silver sealer and I'm mixing up with a paint paddle actually that I created on my 3d printer I have some paint paddles over there on the website if you happen to have a 3d printer you can go get the file over there so I'm going to take the sealer and I'm going to mix in about 10% 4011 reducer and I'm going to mix that up really, really well. And what I'm using here is a trigger style 0.5 airbrush because I originally was just going to, you know, keep it off the artwork and go around the edges. But as you're going to see here, it's going to take a little bit to cover it with this type of brush. If I just use a small spray gun, like you'll see here in a minute that I'm going to apply to Candy Wit. This is actually my second mistake because especially with the metallics and you can see the metallics flying all over the place here. And I decided real quickly that maybe I should get a mask. So even though it's a waterborne paint, you got those little flakes of metal flying all over the place. It's a little bit different than just painting with your normal, you know, Createx paints. So I got my respirator on here and also hooked up an exhaust fan. But the mistake here is you'll see with a 0.5 trying to cover a surface of this size is, especially with the metallics, you can get some striping. Um, so I'm gonna take my time here and I decided I was still gonna finish it off with a 0.5, but I'm gonna take my time and I'm really gonna keep overlapping it until I get my coverage and until I feel it's not striped anymore. But again, this is a mistake in my opinion. This should have been dealt with with a small spray gun. The coverage would have taken maybe one, possibly just two coats, probably two coats. And I would have had good solid even coverage. All right, so I got some black candy here and I got my UVLS clear, my 4050 UVLS clear. And again, I'm gonna to attempt to put this in the airbrush, which is not ideal. And as you'll see, I correct this mistake, but again, another mistake. I'm gonna give it one more shot of air, make sure all the dust is off. So as I started to spray, I just realized really quick that this was not the coverage that I was looking for. Sometimes you just got to cut your losses and try something different, or at least go to what you know works. So my first shot at the candy is I looked at it and I thought, well, it doesn't look too bad. It kind of pushing the artwork back a little bit further than I expected. Candies, you, you need more than one coat. But the other thing with candies is you want to make sure it's dry between coats here. 
So when you're not seeing it as off camera, I actually, you know, I put a fan, I put some air on it. And you see, I'm even just trying to dry it off here, uh, running some air over it with the compressor. What I'm doing now is putting an inner coat clear. I'm using the UVLS to 4050 as an inner coat clear because I want to try to redo the artwork with some wicked white. And if you don't put this inner coat clear on, the candy will bleed through. So again, I'm just drying it with some air. The other thing I noticed is I have some scratch marks because I didn't finish off the 400. So this is why I'm attempting to take the white and go over the artwork, attempting maybe to hide the scratches, which I know better, you're not gonna hide scratches with paint. So I realized real quick that I gotta take it and re-sand it down, and that's exactly what I did. I re-sanded it down, wet sanded it with 400, got it all smooth. Now I'm coming back in with my Wicked White and I'm gonna touch up some of the artwork. As you can see, all of the black is removed. And again, what I did is I waited till it dried, and I came back and I wet sanded with 400. But the surprise I was talking about in the beginning is if you look at the artwork, now that Wicked White is no more clear on top of it anymore, and that artwork is what was left over after I got done sanding it. And I thought it looked really cool. And so I had an idea with the black candy of just going around the outside of this with the black candy and kind of just pushing the edges back. So the surprise, like I said in the beginning that I told you I had was, I didn't have to redo all of the artwork. And I actually really, really liked the effect around the edges that the sanding created. All right, so now I got my candy mixed up one to one in my small spray gun. And I'm putting my first coat on. And right now I'm thinking, oh, it looks pretty good. The artwork's still showing through. Got, you know, coat of candy on. The mistake here that I'm gonna make here is by putting a second coat on the entire artwork. If I would've just stuck to the edges, it might've been okay. But as you see, I went over the entire artwork and it really just pushed the artwork back to a point where it was just too dark for me. So wet sanded it again, starting over. So now I'm gonna keep the candy to the outer edges. And that's my first coat of candy. Second coat of candy, and again, you're not seeing that. I let this dry, I ran air over it before my second coat. And there you have it. I really did like the way it came. As you can see, the middle just really brightens up with the candy around the edges. I actually like this artwork better than the original artwork itself. So now I got my Spray Max 2K clear not going with the 1k and something like this anymore and that's my flash coat a nice you know relatively quick light coat and again waiting until this dries about five minutes till it gets tacky and that's my second coat and i slow down and i go wet on the next three coats and the other thing between coats what you're not seeing is you see me feel that there you want to feel someplace like on that tape there the tackiness and what it should feel like is it should be tacky, but it shouldn't come up on your finger. Well, all right, there you have it. So if you stuck around to the end of the video, you saw that I didn't achieve this result the first time through. It actually took me three tries. Hopefully the takeaway from this video is don't be afraid to try something you know, that you're not comfortable with. The worst that could happen is that you learn something. I've learned a lot going through this particular piece. And as I said before in the video, I was really, really surprised how hard Createx Wicked Paints really are. So again, I learned a lot. I hope you did too. So if you did and you like this type of content, consider subscribing. You guys know the drill. Comments, hit those links. It all really helps out. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.